If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In order to solve most capacitor questions, what we need to do is combine the capacitors step by step until we have a circuit with just a single equivalent capacitor. And so let's take the first step in combining the capacitors by looking at the two capacitors marked C1 and C2 right here, as well as here. Now we can see that those two capacitors on the left side are in series with one another, as are the two capacitors on the right side. And we know that when capacitors are in series, they obey the following equation. We have one over their combined or equivalent capacitance equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the individual capacitances. So looking at C1 and C2 for the capacitors on the right side, in order to calculate their equivalent capacitance, we could simply plug in the value of C1 and C2. Now that was given to us in the question as 5 microfarads and then 10 microfarads. So here we would have 1 over 5 plus 1 over 10. And then of course to add these fractions together we need a common denominator. So we can multiply the denominator here by 2 as well as the numerator. So we're going to end up with 2 over 10 plus 1 over 10 is equal to 1 over the equivalent capacitance. And then of course if we add together we get 3 over 10. Now be careful, this is not the equivalent capacitance because what we still have to do is flip both sides around. And you are certainly allowed to do that whenever you have a single fraction equaling another single fraction. So if we flip those sides around we're going to end up with CEQ over 1 which is just CEQ and that will equal 10 over 3. And the unit right now is in microfarads. So that's the equivalent capacitance by combining C1 and C2 on the right side as well as on the left side. Now that we have combined them, what we want to do is redraw the circuit. But we will take those two capacitors and join them or combine them into a single capacitor. And so we've done so and we have labeled each of those two equivalent capacitors 10 thirds microfarads for the left one and on the right side. We will now notice that C2 and C2 over here are in parallel. And it turns out that when capacitors are in parallel, they follow this equation. We can see that in order to find the equivalent capacitance in this case, we can simply add together the individual capacitances. So for instance, if we're going to combine these two capacitors right here, since they are indeed in parallel, we can simply sum those two capacitances. So it'll be C2 plus C2, or if we prefer 2C2. Now the question tells us that C2 is equal to 10 microfarads. So we would have 2 multiplied by 10 microfarads. And that, of course, is 20 microfarads. So this becomes the equivalent capacitance for the capacitors that were marked C2 and C2. Let's once again redraw the circuits and combine those two capacitors into a single equivalent capacitor. Next, we can see that the capacitors marked 10 thirds microfarads C3 and then 10 thirds microfarads again are all in parallel. So we can combine those three by simply adding their individual capacitances together. And so we'll go ahead and do that and combine them into a single capacitor. So we're adding the 10 thirds microfarads plus C3, which had a capacitance of 2 microfarads. And then we're adding it again to 10 thirds microfarads. And when you add those all together, I forgot the unit here, you're going to end up with 26 thirds microfarads. So that is the equivalent capacitance of those three parallel capacitors. We finally have a series combination, and so we're going to be following this equation. And so we're going to have 1 over their equivalent capacitance will equal 1 over 26 thirds microfarads plus 1 over 10 microfarads. And if you add the right hand side together, perhaps using a calculator, you should get 14 over 65 microfarads. And then when you flip, actually we should say 14 over 65, the microfarads would be in the denominator. When you flip around both sides of that fraction, you can see that the equivalent capacitance becomes 65 over 14 microfarads. So that is indeed the final and correct answer. And of course, if we wish, we can reduce that down to a decimal. And if we did that, we would get roughly 4.64 microfarads. So why don't we draw the circuit one last time. This time we only have a single equivalent capacitor. We still have point A and point B here. And again, the equivalent capacitance here is equal to roughly 4.64 microfarads. We will next move backwards from this equivalent capacitor all the way to the original circuit diagram. And as we move backwards through the diagram, we're going to be 
using the following equation, which gives us the charge on any one of the capacitors. We know that the charge is going to equal the capacitance times the potential difference. In addition, as we move backwards to the original circuit diagram, we're going to be following these two rules, which we will explain as we go along. Whenever we're moving backwards and we move to a series arrangement of capacitors, we want to make sure that we bring with us the charge. On the other hand, if we're moving backwards to a parallel arrangement of capacitors, we're going to bring back with us the potential difference. And again, we'll see how these rules apply. Let's go back to this diagram right here. We know the equivalent capacitance, and we also know that the potential difference between points A and B would be the same as the potential difference across the plates, and that was indeed 60 volts. So looking at this equation here, we could see that the charge, Q, would equal the capacitance of 4.64 microfarads multiplied by that 60 volts. And when we multiply that out, we get a charge of approximately 279, and the unit here will be microcoulombs since we used microfarads for the capacitance. So let's label the 279 microcoulombs for this capacitor right here. We'll use a different color so it kind of stands out as a charge rather than a capacitance or potential difference. And now what we're going to do is move backwards from this capacitor to these two. Now these two are in series, and according to our rules, whenever we move backwards to a series arrangement, we're going to bring the charge with us. That means that the charge on these two capacitors will also be 279 microcoulombs. So we'll come in here and we will label the charge on each of those two capacitors. What we don't know is the potential difference. Now that's easy to calculate because if we divided both sides of this equation by C, we could see that the potential difference is simply the charge divided by the capacitance. So all you need to do now is take the charge and divide it by the capacitance, and that's going to give you the potential difference for each of these capacitors. So let's do it for the first one here. So when you divide the charge by the capacitance, you end up with a potential difference of about 32.1 volts. And then for this capacitor, make sure you divide the charge, which is in red, by the capacitance, which is in black. And when you do that, you get about 27.9 volts. Now we're going to continue our way backwards, and we're going to move from this capacitor right here to the three from which it was derived. That was these three, if you recall. And those three capacitors were in parallel with one another. So if we're going to move backwards to parallel, we're going to bring with us the potential difference. So let's take the 32.1 volts and bring it backwards with us and make the potential difference for each of these 32.1 volts. Now remember C3 had a capacitance of 2 microfarads, so we can come in here, maybe right about here, and write that in. This is 2 microfarads. And the question wanted us to figure out the charge stored on C3. We are now ready to do that because charge is capacitance times potential difference. And so we'll do this one more time where we multiply the capacitance by the potential difference and that's going to give us the charge on capacitor 3. So we can make that work over here. We know that Q will be 2 microfarads multiplied by the 32.1 volts. And when we multiply that out, we get about 64.3 microcoulombs. Notice again, the unit is microcoulombs since we used microfarads for the capacitance. So this is the correct answer for the charge on capacitor 3, which we can call Q3. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and then also subscribe so you can stay tuned for similar videos. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the solution to it on YouTube.